How do you know when the computer is done? Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. And today on Practical CFD Modeling, we're going to talk about judging convergence. CFD solvers use an iterative process to solve their equations. They take a guess at something, they solve the equations, and then they refine that guess. It's an iterative process, and the CFD operator has to decide when that's done. That's called judging convergence. Well, let's dive into it. The primary tool for judging convergence is the residuals plot. But that's not the only thing that you're going to use. You're actually going to build up a preponderance of evidence. It's not just one tool that you use. You're actually going to use your residuals plot, you're going to create monitors, and you're going to check your flow patterns. All of these are going to build a consensus to really judge whether or not you're converged. So monitors are physical quantities that are important to your simulation. So for example, if I'm doing a simulation that's trying to calculate the resistance of a ship in water, then a monitor is actually going to be calculating the actual force on that ship. I'm going to calculate that in real time as the simulation is running and monitor how that value changes in real time. What I'm trying to see is that whether that value changes and see if that actually trends out to a nice flat stable value. Sometimes it won't actually turn into a flat stable value. Uh, it might actually become a periodic value. What I, mean by, what I mean by that is that it will keep oscillating in a nice steady period back and forth. That's okay too, but it should be a stable period. It shouldn't keep bouncing all over the place. It should be a predictable pattern. Either way though, we're looking for a stable trend here. Stable is the key part. Monitors are one of your best things. You should always have at least one monitor for every simulation because we're looking for real world numbers out of this. So judge by a real world monitor. The next thing you should also be checking is your flow patterns. Create visualizations in post-processing. Look at your flow patterns. Make sure that they make sense. Remember, your CFD solver is just a mathematical solver. All it knows is solving equations. It doesn't care whether or not the equations come out with real physical meaning. All it knows is that the equations balance. You, as the operator, you have to make sure that the equations and the flow patterns have real physical meaning. So check your flow patterns. And then the last one is your residuals. The residual plot is probably the biggest thing you're going to use for judging convergence. And it's a pretty dense plot. There's a lot of information that gets packed into it. So let's unpack this. The residuals plot is something that comes standard with pretty much every CFD solver. And what it does is it's plotting out the difference from one solution to the next of each of the equations it's solving and it normalizes that difference because obviously these can be very large numbers. So it's normalizing that difference between one guess to the next. And that gives us a pretty nice pattern that we can predict. What you're seeing in the screen on your right, that's a pretty typical graph of what a residuals plot should look like. That's a typical sawtooth pattern. You're going to see this for an unsteady simulation, a simulation that's varying in time. Each one of those jumps up that you're seeing right there, that's when the simulation goes to a new time step. So it jumps up at a new time step. It's iterating down. That's where it's refining its solution. It's hit a convergence point where it finishes. The next jump up, that's a new time step and iterates down, converging. That's what we're looking for. So the key points there are that at each time step, the residuals are trending downwards. That strong downward slope is the thing that we're looking for. We're also noticing how each one of our spikes, each spike upwards, is at roughly the same point or at lower, we don't see those spikes going higher with increasing time. That's also the important part. The other important part that we're looking for is the level of the residuals. There, there is a target that we're looking for here. What kind of level of residual are we aiming for here? Well, it varies depending on your software because each one of these softwares, they normalize their residuals differently. So you do have to read your help file, but here's some general information for you. Uh, keep an eye on your y-axis, by the way. These are logarithmic plots. One times 10 to the minus third, that's probably just a pretty picture. Don't put much faith in a simulation with residuals of that level. 
1 times 10 to the minus 5th, that's excellent. That's a very reliable simulation. You can put a lot of faith in that. 1 times 10 to the minus 6th, that's insanely good quality. You don't really need that much quality. Now sure, you're going to have equations that go down to that level of quality, and that's just going to happen but it's not necessary. Don't feel compelled to drive to that level of quality. I mean, you might think, oh, it's only 10 times less. That's not that much. It is. It's a lot less. To give you an idea of how much 10 times less is, what I want you to do is when you sit down for your dinner tonight, when you look at your plate, what I want you to do is only eat one tenth of your meal and then see how long you can hold out before you eat the rest. Here are two more examples of typical plots that you would look at for judging convergence. The plot on the left is another example of a residuals plot. This is from another CFD software package called OpenFoam. I wanted to show you this one because it looks a little bit different. You don't see the sawtooth pattern here, but it is actually an unsteady simulation, so it is advancing in time, but there's no sawtooth pattern. This is because it's plotted a little bit differently. Rather than showing each of the inner iterations, what it's doing is it's only showing you the start and end of that inner iterations. So for each variable, you actually have two plots, one at the beginning of the iterations and one at the end of the iterations. And that still works. You can still see the results of that because you can notice that you've got the dashed lines at the top and the solid lines showing the final value of that variable way, way, way down at the bottom and that still shows that you're getting strong, stable convergence because the final values of those variables are far down there, far lower than the initial values. So it's a totally different appearance, but you're still getting the same result of seeing a strong downward trend. The plot on the right, on the other hand, is an example of a monitored value. And this is another example about how you have to be able to interpret things. This is a real world physical value. And at first you might think, oh, this is bad. It's right around 10 to the minus third. The, the guy on YouTube said that 10 to the minus third is unreliable. Ah, but I was talking about residuals. This is a monitored value. It's a physical value, not a residual. So if we think about the variation of a physical value, 10 to the minus third is less than 0.1% variation of a physical value. That's a pretty small variation. That's just fine when we're talking an actual physical value. And that's why I say rely on monitors a lot, because they're a very reliable indication at times when your residuals might be a little deceptive. And that's why you need to use the combination of residuals and monitors when judging convergence. Of course, not all of your residual plots are going to look this nice. You're going to run into troubles. So let's talk about some issues and ways that you can troubleshoot residuals. First, if most of your residuals are behaving but just one equation is look giving you trouble, Look for trouble spots in your mesh. And this is going to appear in your residuals plot where it initially spikes up in your residuals and the simulation crashes that one equation, or possibly you have initially a stable simulation and then that one equation suddenly starts going up, 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 and spikes, and then your simulation crashes. That's how it'll appear. In those cases, you're going to look for trouble spots in your mesh. Uh, it's gonna be appearing as one bad area in your simulation. You want to look for poor mesh cells, poor mesh quality, poor mesh resolution, something like that. There, there's a single trouble spot somewhere that you have to deal with. Next problem, if you have a constantly bad set of residuals where a whole set of them, like your all of your momentum equations or all of your volume fraction equations are giving you trouble, all of them where they start trending down, but then curve upwards and eventually trend towards infinity, then you want to try changing your order of interpolation. Try going from second order down to first order. Now you may not want to do that for reasons of accuracy. For example, if you're talking momentum equations, I would never recommend changing from second order down to first order for your momentum. That's too large of a sacrifice for accuracy. However, you may want to do it just for debugging purposes. And then finally, if your residuals are oscillating but not actually converging, that is when you look at your residuals, they're just holding as sort of a bouncing steady line, but they're not actually trending downwards, then what you want to do is reduce your relaxation factor for those equations. And so you can see how your residual plots, they're not only a tool for judging whether or not your simulation is converged, 
They're also a tool for debugging your simulation and a feedback tool for changing the settings of your simulation. To wrap things up, the main things you need to take away from here are that when judging convergence, it's not black and white. There's not just one tool that you're going to use. You need to use your monitors, your residuals plots, and your flow patterns. Build up a consensus. They're not all going to be correct 100% of the time. One thing I will drill into your head is create a monitor. For every single simulation, create some sort of monitor. Remember, you're building these simulations to actually get real-world physical values out of it. So you should be monitoring physical values from your simulations to ensure that they are reliable. And then in general, when you're looking at your residual plots, your target should be around 10 to the minus fifth, but there are exceptions to that rule. And anybody that gets into more advanced CFD will be able to tell you of a lot of exceptions to that rule. So take it as a soft target. But I hope this helps you and happy CFD modeling. Thanks very much. I am Nick the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.